the keys. Notice, he never said, this shall turn to my salvation through my prayer. No. There are times the one in the tragedy, you may not have the power to save yourself. He says, it shall turn to my salvation through the prayer of another. Through your prayer. Your prayer. Your prayer over me. Your speaking over me. The prophetic that you bring over me. I know this shall turn. I have prayed it did not turn. But there is a system God designed in the kingdom where tragedies and calamities and losses and pain are able to be turned to your salvation through your prayer. Watch this. Let me give you... Let's do three keys. One, the first key when you want total deliverance from calamities is self-examination. Write it down. Self-examination. Self-examination. Luke chapter 15 from verse 17 to 20. Popular story that I've shared here many times. My Bible says when he, the he being the prodigal son. Remember the story of the prodigal son? That guy went and wasted his life in riotous livings. The Bible said so. From friends to all kinds of people, he depleted himself until he was feeding with swine. And then the Bible says, through the power of self-examination, when he came to himself, men can come to themselves. It is within the power of men to come to themselves. You know what it means to come to yourself? Why is my life like this? The day you are ready to sit down and ask honest questions, no matter how ego stinging those questions are, you are already on the path to deliverance. Are we together? The prodigal son's father never came and met him in his mess. There was a part that the gentleman had to do and play by himself. Many people do not come out of tragedy because they have not been able to sit down and ask honest questions. Why is this ministry like this? Why is this circle of disfavor? What is wrong? I look at my life and I do not see it consistent with what God has said. What could be wrong? Let me tell you this. It is more comfortable to blame people than to sit down and ask intelligence pro-deliverance questions. There are many of us today, we are masters and experts at blaming people. God, government, friends, everybody. The power, if the prodigal son had said, God punish those prostitutes that ate my money. God punish the wicked friends that we parted away with. God punish all those people. He would, have, he would have become a pig himself. But he said, do you know what? It's not the fault of the prostitutes. I gave them room to destroy my money. It's not the fault of the bad friends. I did not have discernment to know they were evil friends. But now, no matter what you lose, do not lose sincerity. Did you hear what I said? No matter what you lose, your point of deliverance is when you become sincere with yourself. Why do I have friends who always leave me? Why do I start a business and never end? Why is it that the vision God has given me does not grow? Is God speaking to someone? Why is it that I keep having attacks? Why is our family like this? 23 people, nobody's head has been lifted. Something must be wrong. Do you know you can sit down as an individual? You can sit down as a couple. You can sit down as a ministry. You can sit down as a family. It was God's servant who said years ago the church was not growing. And they gathered the core leaders in the ministry. Rather than shouting and blaming people and giving flimsy excuses that there are too many churches or there are this and that and that. No. He went back and said, there has to be a way out. Three days, fasting and prayer. And while they were praying, according to him, he said, the Lord asked him to go out and he looked up and he saw a, a dark layer of cloud. And the Lord told him, this is the blindfolding layer that keeps misrepresenting your ministry before people. And then he asked, what should he do? And the Lord told him to rebuke it. He rebuked it. It folded like a curtain. And God gave him an instruction. Prepare a poster and write there, come and see. That was it. Hallelujah. Self-examination. 
Everybody hates me. My uncle will not help me. God will punish them. Their children will see evil. You will suffer there while he keeps rising. Self-examination. Self-examination. Let me tell you this. Self-examination is very discomforting. But that is the springboard for your deliverance. God will never bring deliverance to a hardened, arrogant, self, um, self-righteousness individual. No. For someone God is speaking to you now, your arrogance is the greatest demonic attack over your destiny, not even spirits. Let me show you the position of self-examination. This is it. The ability to go on your knees, no matter how great you are, Get down on your knees. Lord, you gave me 10 million. Out of pride and foolishness, I blew it away. I repent. I need you to help me. I went around borrowing money. Now I'm in debt of 100 million, 1 billion. Oh, I gave the money to somebody. That, that's a flimsy excuse. Settle down with your destiny and take responsibility. I gave a real estate agent. He ran away with the money. What do you do now? Settle down. A miracle happens when people are ready to take responsibility. The word responsibility comes from the word responsive. How many hired servants? Give us the scripture, please. Look. How many hired servants as my father? And I am here. They have bread enough to spare and to perish. And I perish with hunger. Verse 18, I want to show you the power of self-examination. I will arise. I will arise. Not that I will lie down and wait for someone to come and meet me. I will arise. Men may forget me, but I will arise. I cannot redeem myself, but I can arise. And I will go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. Look at what he's saying. Self-examination is a miracle. The moment you get to a point where you can take responsibility for as long as you still blame people, I can tell you, redemption will be far from you. Even salvation today, those who receive that gift are those who admit that they do not have the power to help themselves. Anybody who comes before Jesus to be saved and you put your hand in your pocket and you come and stand and you are watching and smiling as if you are coming to you are i mean as if you died for yourself and you say lord jesus well interesting i mean i'm here i mean if, if you are, I mean, you are speaking english you would not be saved with the heart man believes are we together blind Bartimio said have mercy on me he would have said jesus i have wicked relatives i'm not the only son of my father i've been blind here and nobody has come to comfort me the miracle of self-examination for someone God is speaking to you now why is my business down there must be a way I'm a CEO someone ran away with my money someone betrayed me someone stole my products and ran away with it my business partners ran away I know they may have the fault but I need to take responsibility Lord Jesus it depends on only me and you. You remain ever faithful. The failure is from me. I take responsibility. How come I have four children and none of them respect me? Not they went to school and learned rubbish as if you taught them well. Take responsibility. Lord, even now it is not too late. They are adults and all of them discard me. There's something I've not done well. Why are my children not becoming great? All my children are beggars. Don't move around and saying, look at all your uncles. Some are in Lagos. Some are in House of Assembly. And they will not come. You hear parents with all due respect. Discuss those things. And their arrogant children also keep joining in the conversation to recycle pain. I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm trying to be truthful. Take responsibility. Hmm. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Lord, help me. I need you. I need you. Help me. I cannot help myself. Oh God, you are my God. Help me. And I will ever praise you. That's a life of self-examination. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, say. Oh, 
Man of God, don't give excuses. You took the anointing for granted and you were careless. You took members for granted, you were careless. You insulted them and said all kinds of things. If you are tired of this church, go away. And they obeyed you and went away. Don't say there is a spirit. Before you talk of altars, go and kneel down before God and say, Lord, help my pride. Don't say it's my background, it's from my father. If I did not come from this father, <clears throat> I take responsibility. I've not been the best of shepherds. I've not loved the sheep. This is the attitude of genuine self-examination. The next is brokenness. Self-examination naturally graduates you. I'm showing you the keys. Many people pray and call for help, but they don't examine themselves and they are not broken enough to receive redemption. Brokenness 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 Psalm 51 and verse 17 this is an irrefutable formula it will bring any man out of any calamity the sacrifices of God are not just offerings and tithes but a broken spirit it says a broken and a contrite heart oh God thou will not despise if there is one man I tell you that for want of word I will say God cannot resist in terms of paying attention to is a broken man no matter what has gone wrong in your life carry what is left and cry for mercy carry what is left and cry for mercy my home is broken my life is broken my reputation is broken I've done things I should not do and I've destroyed myself carry what is left to the altar are we together? Carry what is left to the altar. I'm a victim of lack of discernment, you may say. I'm a victim of carelessness. I'm a victim of abuse and misuse. God gave me some money. God connected me to seasoned prophets, seasoned apostles. I used my own hand to destroy my thing. Now, Lord, I'm ready to get back. Oh, listen, in my walk with God, there, I, there, is, there, is, there is nothing more, um, uh, the, the, uh, how would I put it now? That there is nothing that moves the heart of God like a broken vessel. Let people laugh at you. Let them talk about your yesterday. Go to the horns of the altar. For as long as you remain proud, in the inside that hole you will keep digging when you find yourself in a hole ladies and gentlemen calamity has struck your destiny run away from pride pride will only complicate your situation hallelujah go before the lord lord have mercy on me you gave me a good husband i didn't have the grace to see i kept comparing him with other men not knowing that he was a faithful man and now Things have gone apart. Show me mercy. Not, oh God, I know I'm a beautiful man. Somebody will come by force. You talk like that, you remain in that situation. God hates pride, I tell you. I'm an intelligent person. All it takes is just for me to get one data job online and money will start coming. And heaven looks at you and says, are you not tired of foolishness? Only fools say in their hearts there is no God. Anytime you find yourself in trouble, go and lie down before God. I'm telling you, this is a formula that works. Roll on the ground before God and say, my King and my Savior, if you do not show me mercy, there is no redemption in the grave. Pray the prayer of Jonah. Pray the prayer of Hezekiah. The dead cannot praise you, O God. The poor cannot give to your work. I have made mistakes. I agree, but show me mercy. You are ready to see deliverance. It is true. I stole the money in the office. I shouldn't have, but sincerely I did. It was out of pressure. Now I've been pushed out of the job. 
I take responsibility. I may not be able to return to that frame again, but my God and my King and Savior, nobody will believe I am changed, but you who is my God and you see my heart, can you accept the pieces of this shattered destiny? And God says, bring it. I am not only a Savior, I am the great physician. Hallelujah. Have you seen surgeons perform surgery? Sometimes they remove human parts and you think that is an abattoir to sell it. They only want to recouple it again. Maybe like a bypass for a heart surgery. It is amazing. If you have the opportunity to see that kind of thing, you will not believe that a human being can be shredded like that. They literally can saw the, the skull of a man to reach through the brain and remove a tumor and do all kinds of things. And you are watching a human being in various pieces. And just when you think the person is not alive, is not breathing, just be patient. The great physician is walking and he keeps walking. For some of you, it will not happen in one day, but just know the great physician is walking. From the moment you began your tears in sincerity, he began to walk. For some of you, from January till now, you may not see any motion physically, but imagine yourself in the ICU. The surgeon is walking, fixing your life fixing everything hallelujah fixing it fixing your business while others will say my god this man you used to be a millionaire shame on you you've gone down what happened prodigal businessman they do not know you are already negotiating with god can i tell you be careful when you conclude on men if god is still alive there is still a future for them because while you are talking about the Jesus who died, he's resurrected long. He died for only three days. Hallelujah. But that prayer, take it higher for me. Let me sing that case string song. I think this is a good place to sing that song. Get the mic, come. father who is ready to be broken that mother ready to be broken that pastor ready to be broken that once great apostle prophet who is ready to be broken that one's millionaire who is ready to be broken that one's amazing child who declined to become a prodigal child there is always room at the cross Listen, ladies and gentlemen, there is always room at the cross for the broken, for the contrite. There is no room for the proud. There is no room for those who cannot examine themselves. Remaining in pride, I, I can figure my way out. You will keep digging and digging till you cannot be seen again. Listen. Those who know this principle are those who perpetually tremble before God. They do not even wait till things go wrong by default. The way we stand in this kingdom is to be on our knees. If you stand by standing on your feet, you are in a wrong position. Champions stand by remaining on their feet. That is the most stable position for the believer. The moment you remain on your knees, you have gained stability. You don't fall when you're on your knees. You only fall when you are standing on your feet. 
self-examination now we get to the last and the final key 